Hello, my friends, and welcome. Katie here with Eastwix Paper and Ink. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. Today is Mail Art Monday, but really it's Tuesday, and we're going to make a matching envelope to go with this card. If you hadn't had a chance to check out the video where I made that card, I'll link it up above, down below, and at the end. But today we're going to make a matching envelope. We're going to be using Simon Says Stamps Pinu Bouquet Stencil. We've got our 123 Punch Board from We Are Memory Keepers. We've got a gold pen from Pilot. It's the G2. I've got a watercolor uh, brush that uh, I use between an eight a 6, 8, and a 10 just depended on what I needed it for for the stencil. And then I've got some 119 pound watercolor paper. I did try this with 90, but I didn't love it. It was too thin. And so I went up a little bit to the 119 pound. So for the dies, I'm using some Procyon dies. These are fiber reactive dies used to make tie dies. My husband and I make tie dies, and I always have leftover ink. And according to the manufacturer, once they've been mixed for two weeks, um, they lose their start to lose their potency. So I just put them in mason jars and keep them for my paper crafting. Now for the envelope, I've cut my watercolor paper down to eight inch squared. This is not the same measurement that is on the punch board. I'm using the old school measurement that first came out with the punch boards um, because I have a thinner card. I don't have a lot of bulk. If you have a lot of bulk to your cards, you want to use the measurements that's on the punch board because that's going to give you that extra space so that if your embellishments and things like that uh, will fit smoothly. So I'll li list this down below, but my paper's eight inch squared and then I'm starting my um, scoring at three and a half inches and then just following the lines around. And so for my stencil, I always use a repositionable adhesive. I am using Scotch today but if you have pixie spray or another brand you, you can use that uh, i highly recommend the spray because it keeps everything in place it gives you those nice crisp lines um, versus taping down i never have success with the crisp lines when i'm taping down so i always spray it i did tape my paper down i have a glass desk so i didn't i wanted to keep the paper still so i just taped down a couple of the corners now for the stamens, I've used the lemon yellow. And for the leaves, I'm using bright green. For the first flower, I'm using amethyst. For the second flower, I'm using fuchsia red. For the third flower, I'm using imperial purple. And for the fourth flower, I'm gonna be using um, a mix of fuchsia red and turquoise. N Full disclosure, I had to redo this because I messed up the gold trim. So that uh, final flower, the fourth flower, is going to be a little bit more purpley at the end because I added a little bit more turquoise to it, um, to the fuchsia red, and uh, I actually like it better. But it's, it's not going to look the same. I just didn't see the need to refilm a whole video for one little flower. So I'm not good at measuring and I messed up the gold trim. So. It had to be redone. So a little bit about these Procyon dies. I have another video that I'll link up above, down below, and at the end, where I show you how to make your own Nouveau Shimmer powders. Now, these are pigment powders. I purchased mine from Dharma Trading. You can get a little kit from Amazon. I'll link that below too. That way you have another option. But these dies are very affordable. The, they come in all different sizes, size amounts. Uh, for paper crafting, I would recommend two ounces is plenty uh, because a little goes a long way. You can see how vibrant these are. So when I mix tie dyes, I mix two teaspoons of pigment powder to eight ounces of warm water. So, and that just helps them to dissolve. So clearly you don't need to use that much to create your dyes. You can, so you get that, you know, nice punch of color, but you don't have to. So you really can get a lot out of that two ounces of powder. And you have a lot of different uses. Um, here I'm watercoloring with them. I put them in a spray bottle and spray them. Um, you can 
use them as as a as a powder, like the Nouveau Shimmer powders, like I show in the in that video that I talked about. Um, so you, it and they're affordable, most importantly. So for two ounces, it's all based on color. But so for the two ounces, it ranges from a dollar ninety five to five ninety five, and there's hundreds of colors. So while these are the bright, punchy colors that we you know use for tie dyeing, they have a lot of softer colors as well. So you can get you know all kinds of colors to be able to create. Um, all, all different things it's just and if you have spray inks already use those you don't have to go out and buy these use those and then know that you have an option to purchase something else um, that's a little bit more affordable and you can see that that top flower is a little bit darker it's a, dif a different purple a better mix I think of um, to to kind of blend in with those other flowers but here I'm just putting the gold trim on and the whole point of this series, it's just one month, one one day a month, uh, I want to bring a mail art video to you to show you that you don't have to be a Christina Warner to create fabulous mail art. It's super easy, and I love Christina Warner, don't get me wrong, but she's very artistic. I am not, and so again, this is a, if I can do it, you can do it type of thing. And you can create awesome mail art without a lot of effort and skill. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just putting some double-sided tape. If you haven't subscribed, please do so ring that bell, select all notifications uh, to be notified each time of an upload. But that's going to wrap up the envelope for me today, guys. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next video.